Hey everyone, this is Ricky Bell with Victolic VDC. I'm a programmer for Victolic Tools for Revit. Now today I wanted to talk about a tool in our ribbon that's really changing the way that we manage our project information. A uh, project specification tool is a tool that you can use to store all of the information that you would typically see on a project specification. So from hanger distances to pipe cut lengths to end prep defaults, and uh, insulation thicknesses in materials uh, as well as field cut lengths. There's a lot of information that drafters are going to have to sift through a project specification for. So our idea here is to save all that information into Revit and then reference it in the many actions that you already use with Victolic Tools for Revit. So let me give you a quick overview of the interface and then we'll talk about what the tool can actually do. Up here in the Victolic Productivity Tools section of the Victolic Tools ribbon, you'll see under Project Maintenance, Project Specification. Okay. Uh, along the left-hand side, these are all of your piping systems found in your project. Now, for each one of these piping systems, you can set rules that have to do with field cuts, hangers, end prep and length, and insulation. So let's take a look at some of the common piping systems uh, here under uh, Chilled Water Supply. Under field cuts, I have some rules in here that say, regardless of the pipe type, and from any sizes up to 6 inch, I want to have a 6 inch field cut length added to any field cut designated pieces of pipe. Now beyond that, 6 and a quarter inch and up, I'd like it to be a foot. So these rules that I have in here for field cut are pretty basic. You can take them to a really granular level though. Let's say we added some new lines, and we wanted to say any pieces of pipe that fall under the IPST pipe type and fall between 2 inch and I don't know say 4 inch I'm gonna say that I want to have a 1 foot 6 inch field cut length for those now these rules that are in here are gonna be read from top to bottom so if you get really granular with these you're gonna to want to put these rules at the top so you can use these buttons to rearrange the rules uh, and now to expedite any more rules that you want to create you can always just copy certain lines move them around and let's say anything from uh, 5 inch then to 8 inch is going to get uh, 2 feet of field cut length. So this is a spot where you can take the information from your project spec and and put it into this particular tool and we're going to use other tools that are in the Victolic ribbon to reference this information and really save you some time when you go to do spooling and you go to generate your bills of material you're going to want to see this extra field cut length accounted for on the bill of material okay so these rules are specific to the piping system that you're using so when you set up supply you're probably going to want return to match it okay so there's some quick ways to get certain rules to populate from one to another so you've got a couple options for that. You can either come into return, start adding rows, make a match, flip back and forth to make sure you have it right, or you can highlight certain rows within water supply, hit this copy button right here, or control C, and we'll go over to return, and we can hit the paste button, and it'll drop in there. We'll get rid of the extra ones at the top, and now they match. Uh, there's other ways to make these match as well. Let's say we want to copy supply, let's say return is empty. Okay, we want to copy supply over to return. Uh, it's very easy to click on supply here, copy piping system, and we'll select chilled water return right there, which is going to overwrite everything in your uh, chilled water return with what you see in supply. So there's multiple tools here to try to expedite the setting up of these project spec tables. Okay, moving on from field cuts, we can take a look at hangers. Now within hangers, you're going to see a similar setup to field cut, except there's a couple different things that we keep track of in here. The entire setup of this tool is based on the routing preferences dialogs that are in Revit. So if you're familiar with them, this is going to feel like home. These rules that I have set up here, again, they're very basic, but they're kind of industry standards. As you progress in size for any pipe type, as long as you're in chilled water return in this case, uh, the rod diameter is going to get a little bit thicker every time and the repeat length is going to get a little bit longer every time. So as you're applying hangers later on in the project you can just trust that the project specification is going to take care of the distances and it's going to be a really big time saver for you. Now end prep and length is going to be very similar. Uh, we have settings in here that are specific to uh, grooved pipe uh, for chilled water return in this case. Uh, you can customize this however you want. You can set a default end prep so as you're piping 
it will um, populate the pipe end prep for you. And then these settings right here are the minimum and maximum lengths of pipe splitting using our pipe tools dialog. So we'll, we'll demonstrate that in a little bit. And then when it comes to insulation, this is an area where you can set up rules. You can get as granular as you want by putting in specific pipe types. Uh, in this case, we just have a minimum and maximum size that anything over two and a half inch is gonna get an inch and a half of fiberglass insulation. Anything under two inch will get one inch. Now you can set this table up however you want and split it at any size range that you want. And then this will query all of the insulation materials that are available within your project. So instead of having to make precise selections and applying insulation to one system at a time or one piece and part at a time, uh, we have a new button in the toolbar to apply insulation. You can make a large selection of components, press our insulation button, and it's only going to apply insulation to what matches up to the project spec. And we'll go over that as well. Okay, so finally we get to see what the tool can actually do when you're doing some typical Revit and Victaulic tools for Revit actions. Now we'll start with a field cut. If you remember for chilled water supply and chilled water return, we set up some specific rules for IPST and let's see how they get applied. Now to do this, I'm going to need some spools. So I'm going to quickly just uh, use Victaulic tools for Revit and generate some uh, fabrication spools. Okay, so I just did a few here and I'm going to detail these as well using the uh, assembly manager. Okay, so in previous versions of Victaulic Tools for Revit, to handle field cut lengths was more of a global setting. So under Toolbar Settings and the Other Settings tab, uh, down here in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll find that uh, previously the additional length to field cut could be set as uh, 6 inches or, or whatever you specify, and you can apply some text at the end. So we want to get a little bit more uh, precise with this. So by checking Use Project Spec for Field Cut Lengths right here, it's going to refer back to the database of information that we just set up. So I'll use our second spool here, CHWR2. Let's take a look at that one. So if I were to set this particular piece of pipe here as a field cut length, I'll go back into spooling view and highlight just that piece of pipe and mark it here as Vic field cut. And back here in the sheet, you see that the sheet is marked as out of date, and if you're using our title block, you'll get a similar result as well. Um, but let's see what the original length is. Looks like five foot eight and three quarters. And then when I go to regenerate just the bill of material, now that this is marked as field cut, the extra length gets accounted for. You'll see that the five foot eight becomes uh, seven foot eight because of the size range that we set up, anything between, uh, what did I say, five and eight inches adds two feet of field cut length. So the project specification tool can also assist in placing hangers and determining the hanger distances. Uh, over here I have a uh, plan view. I have the four piping system set up right here in 10 inch and I have the same four set up here in four inch. If I go back to my project specification rules for let's say uh, chilled water supply and hangers, I'll see that uh, four inch should fall at uh, 10 foot repeating distance and uh, everything above that gets 12. So let's see that in action. Uh, picking a hanger out of the toolbar. You have this option here in this dialog to use the project spec or you can override it manually like that. So if I turn on project spec and just click OK, uh, if I click on this 10 inch piece of pipe here, these should be 12 feet apart. And if I click on the four inch piece of pipe here you know, so that they are 10 feet apart. So let's do a more obvious example. If I go into the project specification tool, uh, chilled water supply for hangers, and let's say that I put this line, this is the one that kicks in when you hit four inch of pipe, and you set that to something a little more obvious, maybe like five feet. So it's going to repeat every five feet. 
So now you can have specific rules for different situations. I'll run the hanger tool one more time. The 10 inch pipe should look exactly the same, but down here at the four inch pipe, we're going to get a lot more hangers displayed. Now even some of the familiar tools in our toolbar like uh, pipe splitting can be driven from the project spec tool as well. These other two systems I have down here are condenser water return and uh, condenser water supply. Now let's set some different rules for our return as we do our supply. Uh, if you remember we have 10 inch pipe and four inch pipe. So let's say our return line for 10 inch uh, needs to be split at uh, 10 feet. Or our supply line for 10 inch will still get split at 20 foot 11. And then maybe even uh, our smaller sizes, let's say we'll split these at eight feet for return and we'll leave it at 20 foot 11 for supply. Let's see what that looks like. When you go into our pipe tools dialog, you're gonna see a very similar setup where you have the option to use the project spec or you can use what's written here, which is uh, one foot minimum, 10 foot maximum. So using the project spec, splitting by length, other than that's default settings, I'll go and hit the uh, 10 inch return, 10 inch supply, four inch return, four inch supply. So as you can see, you get vastly different results uh, depending on the line within the project spec that it triggers. And lastly, I wanted to talk about uh, piping insulation. Setting piping insulation within Revit can be a, a tedious task. So our goal here is to really automate that task by setting up your insulation specification at the beginning of the project and just applying insulation, trusting that the project spec is correct. So I'm gonna flip over here to my 3D view. I have a system set up here. It has um, chilled water supply, chilled water return, condenser water supply, condenser water return. So four different piping systems here, and they can all have specific rules depending on pipe type and size uh, that, that we can apply all of the insulation in one motion. So let's take a look at the project spec and chilled water supply for insulation. Right now it just says uh, everything over two and a half inch is gonna get an inch and a half of fiberglass. Uh, chilled water return, same, and this is pretty typical. Now for the condenser water return, let's do something a little larger. Let's do like three inches of insulation and maybe for uh, water supply, there's no insulation. So I can clear these out. So now with my project spec set up correctly, all I really have to do is make a large selection and click on the insulation tool up in the Victolic Tools ribbon. So here are our results. After the tool is run, we can see that an inch and a half of insulation goes on to our chilled water supply and return. Three inches of insulation gets applied to our condenser water return and then no insulation is put on our condenser water supply and that's what we wanted. Okay, that is the project specification tool. It's a database driven tool that can save all of your important project spec information into Revit, into your Revit project, and then uh, perform automated tasks based off that information. Thanks so much for watching.